In this video, we will showcase a sample initial configuration for a wired network using one computer, one switch, and two Box.io devices. To begin, we are going to turn Wi-Fi off on our computer to prevent potential conflicts between our wired and wireless networks. It is possible to keep your Wi-Fi connection active, provided that your wired and wireless networks are configured to use different IP address pools. But for simplicity, we will just turn off our computer's Wi-Fi in this video. Next, we are going to plug our computer into our switch and we will select the ethernet connection in our network list. Then we will select configure manually and we will enter 192.168.1.240 as our computer's static IP address. Next, we need to make sure we type in a suitable subnet mask as well. In this case, we will use 255.255.255.0. Then we will press apply to activate these computer settings. Once our computer's static IP address is set, we will plug the first box I.O. into the switch. We will then open the IP remote utility, make sure we are in a box I.O. tab, and then here we can give this box I.O. a name. We will call it box I.O. A. Then we will type in the default IP address of the box I.O. This can be found on the information label on the device, and in this case is 192.168.1.244. Then we press connect. Once connected, we press the settings button, and in the change IP address field, we can set a new custom static IP address. Make sure to select a static IP address that is compatible with the static IP address that you set on your computer. In this case, we will use 192.168.1.241. You need to make sure that your subnet and gateway field are also filled, and then you will press set IP to activate the new settings. To ensure that this worked, we will disconnect from the device, type in the new IP address we just set, and then press connect again. As you can see, we are now connecting to this box IO through its new custom static IP address. From here, we will add our second box IO device. You can go ahead and plug the box IO device into the switch now. Then from the manage menu, we will add a box IO device tab. As before, we will give this device a custom name. In this case, box IO B and we will once again connect to this new device using the default static IP address found on the device's information label, which again is 192.168.1.244 in this example. We need to wait a moment for the connection to become active when the box IO device is plugged into the switch or just powered on. Once connected, we will repeat the process of going to the settings page and assigning a new custom IP address, in this case, we will use 192.168.1.242. We will then disconnect and verify that we can now connect to this newly assigned address. And as you can see, that works. And we are now connected to two Box.io devices, each with a new custom assigned static IP address. For more information, contact support at flanderscientific.com. 